A week and a half ago, many of us stood in the freezing rain in the sleet of Battery Park in full view of the Statue of Liberty. And we chanted, no hate, no fear, refugees are welcome here. We listened to rabbis, activists, the mayor, Democrats, Republicans, we rallied to action. To paraphrase a colleague, our feet were completely numb, but our hearts were on fire. We stood with refugees, with immigrants, with those most vulnerable to the recent executive orders and decrees. And one of the soggy, maybe the most soggy, smeared signs excerpted a verse from this week's Parsha. We were strangers in the land of Egypt. The full verse reads in Hebrew, V'ger lo tilchatz, v'atem idatem et nefesh ha'ger, ki gerim heitem be'eretz mitzrayim. Do not oppress the ger, for you know the heart of the ger, for you were gerim in the land of Egypt. Versions of this injunction are repeated 36 times in the Torah. In some ways, we've heard it so many times, we may have lost a sense of the actual meaning. So what do we mean when we translate the word ger? While in rabbinic Hebrew, ger receives a definitional makeover and comes to mean convert, in biblical Hebrew, ger is loosely translated as stranger. But the word ger has so many possible roots and each reveals a different image of the stranger. According to the... Mm. <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. Um, according to the 13th century commentator, Rabbi David Kimchi, or the Radak, the ger emerges, ger emerges from the root gur, sojourning or dwelling temporarily, a.k.a. one who is passing through. But there's also another definition of gur that means dread, fear of, which might lead us to ger as pariah, immigrant as fearsome other. The most whimsical and poignant association comes from the 12th century philosopher poet Ibn Ezra. He relates ger to the word gargir, which means berry, as in blueberry or strawberry. He says, a citizen is like a plant with abundant leaves and roots deep in the ground. A gare is like a berry cut off of its branch, uprooted and alone. When you read this in the context of our verse, we hear do not oppress the one who is cut off from their root, for you know the heart of one who is cut off, for you were cut off and alone in the land of Egypt. We have a visceral collective memory of, we have memory visceral last week. Last Shabbat at the Chesed Shel Emet Cemetery in Missouri, a group desecrated hallowed ground and toppled at least 170 matzevot, or headstones, in this Jewish cemetery. These were matzevot, these were headstones in the old part of the cemetery. These were Jews who had escaped pogroms in Russia, Jews that came here as refugees, who were cut off from the root and replanted their lives in American soil. And now, in their resting place, they have been uprooted. Now, going after cemeteries, this is one of the oldest moves in the anti-Semitic playbook. Wherever anti-Semitism rears its ugly head, cemeteries are often the first place to look. An attack on a grave is a literal uprooting. It shouts loud and clear, you don't belong here. The news from Missouri came at a time in which JCCs around the country have received a record number of bomb threats and anti-Semitic scrawl has desecrated the walls of synagogues and subway cars. 
as American Jews, we stand in a place of privilege and relative security. But those preaching hate are trying to tell us, you are other, and we will cut you off from your roots. In this moment, we feel the pinch of what it is to be a gear. Hate crimes are on the rise, and as every day policies and executive orders attempt to sever the roots and the rights of more and more people, from immigrants to journalists to transgender men and women, these hate crimes will only grow. And this is the moment in which we must build alliances we must join our roots together. In November, when we hosted Sacred Sounds, an interfaith prayer service with Christian, Sufi, Sufi Muslim, and Buddhist sister communities, we committed to having each other's backs. And we've shown up for each other in marches, at vigils, and prayer services. But right now, it's time to step it up and join our roots together to make alliances with people beyond our Dalit Amot or our four blocks, alliances with people with whom we disagree on political issues and on what Yehuda Kurtzer in his February 2nd article in the Jewish Journal calls moral concerns, but with whom we hold aligning fundamental beliefs or moral imperatives. I highly recommend after Shabbat, Googling, reading his article from the Jewish Journal February 2nd. Soon after the destruction at the Jewish cemetery was discovered, two Muslim leaders launched a crowdfunding campaign, Muslims Unite to Repair Jewish Cemetery. The goal of $20,000 was reached within three hours. Over $125,000 has been raised thus far, and all additional funds raised were dedicated to assist other vandalized Jewish centers nationwide. Two-thirds of all the contributions came from Muslim donors. This outpouring of support and care is unprecedented. I want to thank every single person who contributed, every person who said, when a Jewish cemetery is desecrated, this hurts me as a Muslim, as a human being, as an American. This is what having each other's backs looks like. This is the beginning of joining roots. And as a rabbi, I want to pledge that our radically inclusive Jewish community, Romamu, will show up in force and will have your back. Jewish and Muslim communities in the United States have often kept a distance, have treated each other with suspicion. Israel-Palestine has become a non-negotiable red line in all directions. But in the past two decades, programs to bridge and build these communities have risen up and met with some success when space is created not only for places of alignment on moral imperatives, but space for disagreement and constructive conflict around political concerns. And we need to build coalitions not only across religious lines, we have to build alliances within the Jewish community we're not talking to each other. And Kurtzer notes that when we approach coalition building with litmus tests, it may make for an incredibly powerful political community, but its rigidity also is likely to yield an incredibly small group. So it comes down to this. We have arrived today at Shabbat Shkalim, the Shabbat when we recount how every adult Israel male lifted his head to be counted and gave a half shekel toward building the Mishkan, the holy community. Regardless of rich or poor, Republican or Democrat, religious or anti-religious, each one stood up to be counted with and alongside everyone else, joined their roots together and invested in building community. We're living in a time where we must stand up and be counted with and for each other, where we must build vibrant coalitions across political disagreements amongst people of conscience. 
if we join our roots together, not one of us will be toppled. Please rise. <laughs>